Hey everybody, welcome back to the Blue Anchor Podcast. I'm Moose Lundstrom. And I'm Jenna Rose. Jenna Rose. Jenny Neb, how is it going? It is going well. Yeah. I see you a lot nowadays. Do you? Yeah, you're always here. It's good though. I love it. I love coming yeah. down here yeah. and doing this. You got your glasses back? Did you find your glasses? I did. Thank you for setting them out for me. Now she's starting to leave shit here. That's what's that's what's going on. See, it's, and it's this a, surprises you? This surprised me a little bit. You just heard a voice. I mean, Typical sh- chick shit, like <laughs> the leave behind. Yeah. <laughs> so she's Marking gotta her come back dude. and get it. Marking her territory. That's exactly what it is, my friend. Now that voice you hear is a friend of yours you brought on. Absolutely. So this is my friend I've known since junior high school, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you know him too, Mr. Cameron Contreras. <laughs> up, Cam Contreras? How are you, man? Yeah, I'm good, man. That's awesome. <laughs> I, you know, it's. I know we've met before, but like I tell everybody, I've been a drinker most of my life, so I meet people for the first time three or four times. You know, that's funny how that happens because I'm terrible with names. Uh, yeah, you know, I remember yours, Moose. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's easy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, and I, I just kind of go from there. But yeah, on a normal day, you walk up and tell me your name. It's like. Yeah, who the fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> you be, you don't know their names, but you know how you know them more of the time. You know, yeah, you, you yeah. know, you, there's I a, know a face, but you know, yeah. ask me a name, forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's stupid. I can't, it's horrible. You but know. I can. I've got a head full of useless knowledge, so I can't push that shit out. Hey, there's worse things to be <laughs> full of. You're right, my friend. <laughs> I, uh, we were on the comedy shows for years and years and years. Uh, people would walk to me and start talking to me, and I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm playing the game, right, Cam? I'm asking questions. Yeah, sooner or later, you're going to give me some information that lets me know who you are. Yeah. But what people don't realize is when when I'm emceeing on a stage and there's 200 of you, there's one of me and 200 of you. So I've I've already introduced myself to all 200 of you. So I, but you know. Okay. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from because I've done different, you know, hundred different things in my life. Whether you know when I was young, I rodeoed, I raced, you know. <laughs> Ride Harleys, of which I've rode motorcycles ever since I was, you know, legally since I was 17. I love how he says legally. I love the word legally. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, been legally. On, I've been on two wheels since I was about six. Nice. And, you know, but I run into people and talk to people. And yeah. I've, I don't know how many times I've had people come up and, you know, start talking to me. And I'm like, hey, yeah, cool. And I turn around and look with whoever I'm with. They're like, who the fuck was that? <laughs> they're cool, but what the fuck's your name? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. And they're like, dude, they know you. And I'm like, okay, you yeah. weren't paying attention either. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, there's been times, uh, there's a girl, my ex girlfriend now, but when she first friend requested me, I knew I'd, I'd met her before somewhere. I just didn't know where. So I had to, I had to text it to Adam and be like, how do we know this one? Uh, he goes, let's see, uh, Sterling Comedy Show. I think you worked with her brother. I'm like, that's, he knows close that. Close enough, close and enough. And was that spot on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Adam, Adam's got a great memory. I'll give him that. He's got a great memory. Memory of an elephant, as it were. So, but, well, with Adam, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big man. Uh, before we go any further, though, I do want to say, hey, welcome to the Bullhucker Podcast. If you're new to the podcast, what we do want is we bring on a guest. Today is Cam Contreras. Now, what's going to happen is Cam's going to tell us three stories about his life. Now, here's the kicker. Only two of these stories are true. One's either borrowed, all the way made up, or it's an embellished story at the end. And at the end of the podcast, General Russ and myself are going to try and guess which one of them is not the true story. That's right. You've been watching these at all, Cam? Or have you had a yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Yeah. Kind of checking things out, getting a feel for it. Yeah, yeah. How, how are you at guessing? Uh, other, other people's. <laughs> the three I've watched, I was good with two, and the other one I was just like, well, It's well, tough. Yeah. It's hard, man. It's, yeah. it's so tough to be on this side. Well, it and is. you get some, some people that are really good storytellers. Yes, you do. Yes, and, you, do. you know, that are really full of shit, and they can lay it on, and it's great. Right, right. You know, uh, the, the ones I struggle with the most that are the really good storytellers, because at one point in time, Steve Jenkins, back me on this one, you start getting someone of the story, you forget what we're doing here. You just get engrossed sure. in their story, you know, and you're just yeah, like. Yeah, it becomes so relatable. Like, oh, yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It's super hard. And they tell you, oh, this is like, shit. I wasn't even paying attention for any kind of uh, lie in that or any kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, you're, you're not catching the whole. Yeah, you're just into the story. That's happened yeah. to me quite a few times on here. So I've been pretty blessed to have a lot of great storytellers. Yeah. And there's a lot of great ones out there. So yeah, just. Any story is a great story. Yeah. Right? I mean, if really, you twist it right, it yeah. works. Not yeah. even twist it <laughs> right. Just any yeah. story is a great story. And people want to come on the <laughs> podcast. I, I have a hard time explaining to them that. That it doesn't matter if you think it's a small story. It might not be a small story. You'd be surprised how many people relate to your your stories, no matter how small yeah. they are. You know. Yeah, and I've I think I've chosen some ones that are uh, kind of relatable yeah. to some people. Uh, they're they're going to be they're going to be out there, and 
you're gonna have to figure out which which is true and which isn't because right. i've been in some extreme you know crazy situations right so you know i was talking to her and i'm like how do you know with the life i've lived how in the hell do i pick one that <laughs> it's, it's hard i hear yeah. it's, it's difficult man it's really difficult uh, it's easy for me because i've had 161 of these episodes now so i've told every story i think i have i think i'm almost officially out I have to start regurgitating some stories so. <laughs> well when i talk to him i'm like you can't tell any stories that i know from yeah. us growing up yeah. or, and and we have a we have a group of dudes that we hang out with. <laughs> yeah, the degenerates. And we always yeah the degenerates. <laughs> we always end up uh, at usually Hooters and then at some sort of some form of titty bar. Nice. So I, yeah, and you know we usually start out you know somebody's house. Usually it was at John's house and you know pre gaming. Yeah. Yes, John. And we'd go to you know, end up you know shotgun willies and the one that was. Up there on 88. Oh, that nasty one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Freaking dandy, dive strip dandy clubs dance, the best. I think it was No, called. it was... <laughs> I can't even remember the name of it, but it used... You know, years ago, it was an all-nude strip club. Oh. Saturdays, 80, until Saturdays on No, Clifford. this was like oh, 84th yeah. and Umatilla. It was way up north. Oh, well, shit, I don't know. Yeah, you, and this is... I went to the all-nude one one time, and it, yeah, that's a whole different opera. Uh, that's but, the first one I went to was all-nude. That's one of how I discovered strip clubs. Well, it was Saturdays over at Colfax? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we went once during COVID, the big group of us, and remember they were all behind plexiglass? Yeah, they tried being so like, you guys strange. need to put your, your mask on. I'm like, fuck you, we're drinking. Yeah. You're like, but I'm drooling into it. I, I like the fact that they got a mask on their face, but nothing on their clam. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just a pole. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, if that thing sneezes, we're going to have an issue. <laughs> well, if it sneezes, that wasn't healthy before COVID. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think that's a booger on the stage. <laughs> Oh God! That's a what that is. It's oh, an image you don't get out of your head. That's and, what you get. That's why of, I threw it out there. Yeah. The degenerates. We need to get together again <laughs> very soon. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cam, you ready to tell some stories? Oh yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's do it. Jen, you want to read them off? I sure do. So, um, I do want to say that Cam has worked for the DOT for CDOT for yeah, how many years? C dot for about 22 and a half years Jeez, that's a patient Louise. man patient man it's like a um, whole fucking marriage man <laughs> i don't know sometimes i think it's a good idea other times i think i'm too stupid to quit yeah what are you gonna do <laughs> <laughs> so yes yeah, thanks for keeping our roads clean though Absolutely. seriously well i haven't not so much this year i've been out with a with a hand injury so i'm just kind of watching the snow and paint dry yeah was that hand injury from the strip club or no okay no, no. Just to check. this was actual work believe it me. was okay. from private that's what i'm asking <laughs> i wished <laughs> but it was actual work was gone so. oh, okay all right yeah. all right so here are our three stories we have snow plows and wildlife the second one is brown derby and the third is denver traffic oh man I think I'm going to relate to a lot of this today, man. So, you betcha. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, Jen, Mrs. General Russ, you go first, sister. Okay, well, the one that is the most intriguing to me, of course, is Brown Derby. Brown Derby. <laughs> oh, man. Because my, my mind goes immediately into the gutter for some reason. <laughs> Cochina? Co oh, yeah. Well, in Deer Trail, I don't know if it's still there, but there was a bar called Brown Derby. And we'd go down to the rodeo. I, mean, I used to. Is Deer Trail the one out between on I seventy? Really? Okay, no. that's Deer oh. Field. Okay, so it's out between Byers and yeah, Lyman. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Okay, it is yeah, it's still down out there. there. Okay, and, and a bar called Brown Derby. Well, we'd been to the rodeo. Some of the guys we were with were riding that night. I just went down to drink beer and cause hate and discontent. Oh boy! And <laughs> so you know we're at the rodeo and we're drinking along like. Well, they got a hell of a party going down at the Brown Derby. I'm like, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. So we take off and we go down there. And we're having a pretty good time. The place is fucking packed. I said, you know, we're doing this and that. And I was talking to this barrel racer right now. I said, you still get your horse and trailer saddle? She says, yeah, I wasn't going to stop here. But I went ahead and, you know, stop and have a couple of beers. And I'm going to go home because she lived over uh, south of Lyman. Okay. So I'm like, okay. I said, is your horse still saddled? She goes, what are you thinking? I said, just answer the question. She goes, yeah, horse is still saddled. I'm like, okay. When I whistle, open the door. 
What? To the trailer? No, to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I went and got her, got her horse out <coughs> and stripped down to my underwear. Looking around like, well, there's nobody really paying attention. Because there were a few guys out in the parking lot back of pickups drinking beer. And right. They were, you know, weren't really paying attention. So I, you know, got her horse out, got up on it, started, you know, wearing cowboy hat, boots, and a pair of underwear. That's all I had on. <laughs> Sexy. Oh, yeah. Back then, you know, I was in some hat, kind of, I was some boots. kind of shape what other the, than round. And what? underwear. Okay, now. We, <laughs> what year? We got to get deep. Tidy whiteies. I was just going to ask Boxers. Uh, there weren't jockeys back then. Actually, they were like a fitted boxer, that were, or like yeah, fitted boxers. Boxer brief, okay. Boxer yeah. brief, and they were uh, white and blue stripe. Oh boy! Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah we were fa- we were fancy. Sexy. Yeah. And uh, may I ask, what year was this? I want to say it was ninety. Nineteen ninety. All right. So you're just out of high school. Yeah, and and off mm-hmm. living the stupid ch- children's dream <laughs> until we all grow up. <laughs> Wait a second. Who's grown up? Well, yeah, that's I've dirty. gotten older. I've never grown up. Dirty word here. I don't mean yeah. to brag, but I grew up a little bit. Uh, it makes, it makes you did too. We wouldn't be here today if we didn't grow up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because I was afraid of jail. <laughs> so she, you told her to open the door. I whistled and she opened the door. And I spurred that horse and ducked down. I rode that horse from one end to the other. You know, Through the bar. Through the bar. And cowboy hat boots and my underwear. I even stopped and ordered a beer. Did they serve it to you? Yeah. But I, the owner told me, he said, you better get this horse out of here before it shits on the floor. Uh-huh. Or <laughs> I'm calling the sheriff. I'm like, well, give me the damn beer and we'll get the hell out the back door. Yeah. <laughs> Did you order anything for the horse? Uh, no, just selfish, get, let's get the hell out of here because I didn't want to go to jail. Bastards. Selfish, selfish man. <laughs> I can only think of buttered nuts. Buttered nuts. From uh, Half-Baked. Mm-hmm. Oh. With the guy feeding that horse all that <laughs> shit kills him. Well, and the bad part oh, was nice. if I'd have went to jail, it wouldn't have been there. I'd have ended up down in uh, Hugo, which is clear down on the By other Lyman. side of yeah, yeah, that's south of Lyman, and that's because right. that's where the county jail was at. And I was not gonna. Oh wow! Yeah, I was not gonna do that. That's in what? What county is that? That's uh, Lincoln Washington. County. Oh, oh, oh so you've cleared Washington and hit. Oh yeah, we're that. way south. Okay. Okay. Huh. You know, I, I know the counties around because, you know, hauling equipment. Yeah. And plow and snow. No, I mainly, I've done that on I-72 and I'll never go back down there. Well, yeah. they make you plow all over, right? Well, yes and no. My main my main route is I-76. I my dedicated route is I-76 from just a little bit west of uh, Dodd Bridge Road out to the old rest area out there at the 108 okay so i've done that i've been on that same patrol for my whole career so if that road never shitty it's cam's fault yeah uh check with me next winter but this winter it's not mine <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yeah. no i take pride I just, in what i take pride I, in what i do out i didn't there. mean yeah. to interrupt yeah. i just didn't yeah, quite know right. how that worked yeah okay. but i've i've been all the way to denver i've been down on i-70 i've been out to julesburg helping people out yeah. you know you know when we get a bad storm you just everybody you know it's all hands on deck and you go get shit done yeah yeah that's uh i don't envy you guys uh you know and last last winter must have been also a backbreaker man oh it, no, it, it, it was it was nuts every wednesday it was a blizzard every every wednesday, wednesday. yeah and we we went probably two and a half months without a day off i don't doubt it and I don't doubt that and guys bit. were guys were tired very, guys were very short-tempered but we're still dedicated, and we got shit done. Yeah. And I've got pictures where on Highway 61, north of Otis, where we had snow stacked, you know, higher than a road grader. Yeah. And yeah. it was, you know, 15 foot high drifts. Right. And it, it was it was stupid. And just trying to keep the interstate open and you know keep the the commerce going. Yeah. You know, 61 is not that big of a deal. We want it open. We want to keep it open as much as we can, but we had to keep 76 going as best we could. Yeah. Because that's a huge economic e- impact. Right. So, right. Sure. You know, I didn't well, mean to drag you off the subject. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, what would you think about that story? Oh, is that the end of your story? Yeah, pretty what much. I was asking. Yeah. Um, it, knowing Cam as long as I have, 
it wouldn't surprise me for him to pull a song like that. Right, right. So, um, I think it's very believable. Brown Derby, is that a hat? Or are they talking about, like, Derby Derby? Well, you know, they've got the Brown Derby Hotel in Denver. And the the name of the bar and deer trails is the Brown Derby. Or was. I don't know if it's still there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's totally believable. It sounds fun. It sounds like something you would do. Totally. So I gotta, I gotta use a little knowledge I got on the podcast. I didn't know this was a thing. But how many hands tall was that horse? How? Uh, it, was, it was probably fifteen and a half, something like that. You just learned Britain. that that's how you measure a horse. Uh, yes, but John Hastings probably told him because no, know, no, it was before what? him. It was um, oh gosh, darn it! She works for the city of Brush. She came in and she was talking about a horse, and she's all it was. 16 hands high, and I go, what the hell does that mean? That's a tall horse. Yeah, well, I, that might not be the number, but I'm just throwing, yeah. that's how she explained it. And uh, I was like, what What does that What does that mean? And when she told me, I was like, oh, yeah. It's yeah. definitely a weird way. Yeah, it's I a mean, weird measurement, but it goes, you know, back so many centuries. It's sure. how they measure them. It's universal now, right? That's yeah. for yeah, yeah, and that shit. You know, they had the average hand, and they just go up. And yeah. How they'd measure it, because they didn't have a tape measure back then. So what if you're particularly large handed? <laughs> Oh, sorry. That's something I don't have to worry about. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, normal hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, it was 15 hands high? About 15 and a half, yeah. And okay. you pull a mine. Yeah. Well, that's wild, man. About 15, 4, 15, 6, somewhere in there. Okay. Right. Wow. That was a good story. I liked it. That was fun. It's, uh, and these bars back in the day, it was like, uh, even in the 80s and 90s, it's a, uh, it was Wild West, right? I mean, even, I didn't get to the bars till around 90, I think I turned 21 in 96. So you know, it, even back in the day, it was more. It's more. Fun you could get away with a lot yeah, more you shit. Could. Uh-huh. You could, to and me. especially in a small town like Deer Trail, right? Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of law enforcement around, right? And you could, and even with the rodeo and shit going on, you know, they they let a lot of shit slide. Mm-hmm. So they have to. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they, it's you know, you know, such a hit to the economy. They can't get too crazy, right? Well. There's hardly anything out there. There's a great racetrack out there. That racetrack out there is really cool. Well, yeah, that used to be a dog track. Then it was a, uh, they turned it into a dirt track for, for racing, and now it's sitting empty. Hmm. They haven't anything Oh, really nobody really... races on No. What a waste. Yeah, and they were going to convert the clubhouse. They're going to do, you know, uh, food and everything in there and, you know, make it like a VIP section. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the guys that, that had it mismanaged everything terribly. Okay. And it would, and, and that was going on back when I was racing seven, six, seven years ago, if not a little bit longer. Car racing. Uh huh. And yeah, they mismanaged that terribly. That's Interesting. Gotta be, that's going to be a tough business to keep afloat, though. You know? Uh, Especially out there. Well, Have you ever seen it out there? It's well, way out there. The thing about races, we're dumb. We'll travel anywhere. We're going to go race. Okay, let's go. And you get guys from Lamar and, <coughs> you know, all over Kansas, Nebraska. Right. And we go down there and they come to Morgan and It draws Holyoke a huge crowd. And, yeah, and then they're trying to get a track going in Pueblo. And they need some guidance on that one. Yeah, they got Beacon Hill down there already. Um, what are you thinking? Asphalt track, I-25 Speedway? <gasps> is that what it is now? Well, there's one there in, out by the old fairgrounds. Uh it's uh, Honor Speedway, and it's a in, dirt dirt track in Pueblo. Yeah, I don't remember that. They it's off a. Uh, it's Pueblo West out in that area. Oh, Pueblo West. Okay, so it was something else back in the day then. Yeah, uh, it yeah, was you, the old fairgrounds and that. Yeah, the old horse track out there, like Liberty Point by Liberty Point. Yeah, somewhere. There. Okay. I haven't been down there, but yeah. And then they I've just shut down Bandemir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a. <clears throat> that's a thorn in my side. That kind of me too. Me but hope, they're they're talking. They you know, come of the. Some of the locations I've heard about, and I don't. There's nothing set in stone, but they're talking about putting it out by Hudson somewhere. Oh, yeah, really? Well, yeah, which would be great for us. It's a lot closer. It is, but, but you it don't still get won't the be backdrop. thunder on the mountain. Yeah, you don't get oh, the backdrop of the mountain you know, right there. They have PPIR out there. They shut down. That's a perfectly good track, right? Oh yeah, they're in Colorado Springs yeah. Fountain. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was that was a great track. I worked at the uh, nightclub in Pueblo. As everybody on this podcast already knows, I didn't quit saying it. But a uh, guy, Jack, uh, Jack Rohr, that I worked with, got a job bartending out there, man. He was just making just Bank. stupid amounts of money. Yeah, he definitely quit the job at the club. Just to go work at the racetrack. Yeah, good thing he didn't because they should Well, have. and I know that they used to do some 
Well, good move. You know, he used to do some drag race stuff out there, you know, down the, the pit lane and that, but I don't know what's going on with it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they do. I don't know, but it's a waste of money because that's a nice facility. It's, yeah, it's, and it was when it was just sitting there rotten. Yeah, it's well, it was 25 years old now. Oh, that thing went in gotta be, late 90s, no, right? It's, let's see. Yeah, it's got to be close, you know, around that area. I lived in Because I was 96 to 2002. And I had plans to go on one of the the Bush Series races down okay. there. But it never worked out because I had to go to Cortez and help my brother with his fair animals. So I always drive by when all the haulers and everything are sitting there. I was like, Jesus. What's your brother's name? Uh, Cole. Hey, damn you, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Cole? So, all right. My little baby brother. Uh, well, that's now, okay. You got to help me. I got to ask, out. when you did race cars, okay. what, did, what, did you, what were you driving? Oh, uh, I you? ran a sport mod and then I ran stock cars. I ran. Okay. That was this last round. Uh, you know, ran bombers before. You know, back, back in the early '90s, like '91, '92. I drove everything from modified sport mod, stock car, late model. Driven them all. Nice. I, I drove a sprint car one time, and after two laps, I decided those guys are fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> have I you, ever, have no... you ever driven a race car and gone yes. to go just go yes. drift around? I did. I actually, uh, when I worked for Budweiser, I won the uh, contest, so I got to do the Richard Petty Driving School in Vegas. <sighs> Fun. Yeah, Out yeah. there south of Vegas. Yeah. And that... Yep. Yeah, that's, um, that's quite the complex. So, And there's a dirt track next to that, too. Yeah. Oh, I, so it was Budweiser uh, sponsored. I mean, so it was like, I think, 10 of us in our region from Alaska to <clears throat> Idaho. I don't remember the states. There was two from Colorado that made it. And uh, it was wild. I won. I and I I won by a fluke. Uh, Pioneer Distributing had run out of Keystone that summer out here in the northeastern Colorado. Just completely out. They, they they it was real spotty, Jen. So they only got a few cases here and there. Whatever happened. So Bush sold like crazy. Mm-hmm. So I win this contest. And uh, I'm not a racing fan. It's good for it. And uh, all the all the rednecks at work <laughs> at Bed was there. I worked at the time. Hated you. Yeah, well, yeah, because they because here, here's why. If you're a um, race fan, you're a diehard <coughs> well, race fan. Well, here's why because they the boss came out during our sales meeting. He's like, "Well, congratulations, Larry. You, he won the the Richard Petty Driving School." And it's like five hundred dollars in gift cards, you know, because that's when gas really started taking a hike. Yeah. He goes, the "Richard Petty Driving School," and everybody goes, "Oh," and I go. What's that? I go, who the fuck's Richard Petty? And dude, they you'd have thought they loved, they were like, what? And they, I mean, it almost became a, like a yeah, like Vokey still. It's like asking who Axl Rose is, right? I mean, I would know. I said, is it Tom Petty? Because we can get high, right? I mean, that's part of the deal, right? If if you guys are sponsoring this, you know, is that Tom's but, uh, brother. Yeah, he's glaring at me right now, but. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, I'm just trying to, you know, express my disdain for you. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> you know, it was cool, and I, I, I respect it more that I got to drive one. It's, it's pretty wild. It's intense. It's, mm-hmm. it, it, I've never drove, driven something that hugs a road like that. I mean, that thing turns when it turns. I mean, it's yeah. And with an asphalt car, it's way different than dirt. Sure. Uh, oh, I'm sure. You know, you, man, I was a, a decent driver. There's guys in this county that are a hundred times better than I am. Right, you know, like Jeremy Fernier, John Hanson, Jesse Taylor, just name a few. Right. Fernier's, yeah, yeah, he's just a nonstop. And you know those, you know, I've raced with those guys. Driver, and, you know, they're all talented drivers, but there's such an art to driving dirt. Yeah, and it, it it's a definite skill. Hmm. You know, I was, you know, I kept out of trouble, and I was respected, you know, among my class because I didn't cause any problems. Right, I was still fast enough to keep up with everybody and have fun. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, it's it's a definite art. Yeah, and most things are, man. You know, it's, <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's pretty tough. But it was an, it was a crazy uh, the the craziest part about it was uh, so they, they have a pace car and you follow that pace car for mm-hmm. two laps and it kind of determines on your skill level, right? Yeah. But they have a, a line of people like old women and men and, and children that can get into a, a NASCAR with a with a trained driver, a professional mm-hmm. driver, and they haul ass. I mean, they they passed me like I was standing still, and I was doing like one ten. You know what I mean? So wow, the dude, they were hauling ass, you know. And uh, when they go by you, you feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's wild, man. But uh, yeah, it was that was the part. you know you get to the big tracks and that you know like Talladega, Daytona, they talk about air. Yeah, and the the draft. Right, and with that car going away, you, all you felt was air. 
there was a uh, the other guy was from like Alamos or something. He was about my age at the time, well, a little older guy. Mm-hmm. And his nephew was a huge NASCAR fan, massive, and a driver for Budweiser. He was one of his drivers. Uh, and he Dale Earnhardt Jr. at that time. Oh yeah. Well, no, no. I'm sorry, Budweiser, uh, a truck driver. He was one of oh, their delivery driver, yeah. drivers. And he just went up with his uncle because he wanted to watch, you know? Yeah. Well, one of the heads of the, of the Budweiser didn't want to use his ticket. So he goes, you, do you work for this company? And he goes, yeah, I, I drive a truck for you. He's all, you know what? You take my ticket. And that kid's like, are you, you shitting me? And I'm nice. like, uh, yeah, yeah. How lucky is that? Oh, yeah. You know, and he, man, he was, I mean, he fucking a little woody the whole time. I'm like, you know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, that's called an NSH. <clears throat> Called a non-sexual hard-on. Yeah, <laughs> an NSA. Well, he had one, and I hope, I hope, like hell, it was not sexual. So <laughs> I uh, sent yeah. Owen on a. Uh, it wasn't a race drive, but it was a uh, fantasy car drive. So he got to go drive in the Boulder Canyon in a Lamborghini, uh, a Subaru STI, souped up, and a Porsche. No, oh, super nice. Yeah, and he had just a blast doing it. Yeah, yeah. I convinced a kid on Main Street here to. I tried to race him in my Subaru. I pulled up like a dick and revved up my engine. He was in this hot Camaro. I'm surprised the transmission didn't shit all over the ground. <laughs> it's can, a Subaru. I convinced. Well, no, I convinced this kid. I followed him to the park and asked him what was in there, and he was pushing 720 horsepower. And I'm like, "Can I drive your car, teenage kid?" Here I am. He's like, "Sure." So yeah, let's let the old lady drive. Ain't nothing yep, gonna happen. His name was TJ. Thanks, TJ. I had so much fun. <laughs> What's up, TJ? <laughs> yeah, it was the most fun I'd ever had. Mm. I literally felt yeah. my metaphorical balls that day. Huh. Yeah, I was uh, going up to get a piece of equipment off Cameron Pass, and we're running up through there, and I'm just be bopping. I mean, and that's that, a that, pooter, right? Yeah, and I'm you know semi fifty three foot trailers so on my necks. You know, by the time I get back out of there, you know, I got a headache and my neck's tired. Yeah. And I'm cruising along, and I see a couple little dots in my mirror. I'm getting ready to go around another corner. Next thing you know, two Maseratis go flying around me. Oh, shit. And come to find out that uh, it was a once a week or twice a week, those guys go blazing through their yeah. balls of wall, and they finally busted them. Good. <laughs> Good. But, yeah, they flew around me like I was standing still. That's a dangerous road. You no, know, oh, it you is. You know, you're young and dumb, but, I mean, at the end of the day, you're also, you're also putting other people at risk, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, old, that's old man Lundstrom talking, but all right. All right, are we ready for another story? Hey, everybody. We're going to take a quick second to hear from a word from our sponsor this week. Our episode sponsor this week is Full Tilt Trailer Rental. Please remember, if you do use someone local like Full Tilt Trailer Rental, tell them the Bullhugger sent you. Check it out. Hi, my name is Carolyn. My husband and I are the proud owners of Full Tilt Trailer Rentals, a small town rental service. We are here to serve Morgan County and surrounding areas with a full line of trailers to meet your needs. We offer car haulers, utility trailers, and dump trailers for a variety of tasks you may need to tackle. Our competitive pricing and rewards program is here to serve you best. You can contact us or watch all of our activity and promos on our Facebook page. But if social media isn't your thing, we are also available via phone call or text message at 970 970- 467-2393 or 970-380-4720. We're like you haul, but better. Do yeah. another story. All that right. was Brown Derby. Pretty good. Uh, we have snowplow and wildlife and Denver traffic. I always have one I want to hear more than the other ones, so we're gonna say that one to last, Cam. So instead let's hear Denver traffic. <laughs> oh uh, he just starts it off with an immediate <laughs> laugh. Oh, yeah, this one, this one really brings a smile to my face. Uh, I used to haul meat for Nestor Trucking. He ran over the road for a while and then went ahead and uh, ran locals. So running locals and the drop spot, the XL drop spot was over there next to, it was like a block or two down from uh, the Safeway Warehouse. Yeah, okay. So you have to go through Vasquez and catch Colorado and get mm-hmm. on I-70. Yep. Well, and there'd be times you'd be going through there, it'd be like 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, cool. And you get stuck in traffic, yep. catching them lights, catching them lights, catching them lights. Well, you know, you know as well as I do in them trucks, you get a pretty good vantage point sometimes. Yeah. So you bite, be bopping along and kind of look down and just see what's going on. 95% of the time, nobody acknowledges your existence. Right. This one day, be bopping along and it was a little purple car i can't remember exactly what it was and i'm usually really good at remembering cars 
So if I can't remember the car, something good happened. <laughs> and <laughs> be bobbing along, and we're about. Uh, it was before we went underneath the the overpass, the train overpasses there on Vasquez. Okay. Before you get to six, so it's been like seventy fourth or no, seventy eighth. Right. Be bobbing through there, and I look down, and she looks up at me and grins. A pair of bib overalls on. Boom. Oh, nothing. Not a shirt underneath, just the bibbies. Oh no, she had like a little camisole top, and when the top of the bibs went down, fingers went like that. That's highly detailed. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So you got a titty shot out on the highway. Yeah, and then she blew me a kiss, and the way they went, and I'm like, I made my week. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, get up through there and uh, getting ready to make the the circle ramp on the I-70 so I can catch the little frontage road right there because it's a real quick jump and get on there and this old homeless gal. And it's the same day, same morning. I couldn't make this up if I tried. And she's out there dancing and I'm coming around this big, beautiful green truck. And she takes this, what little bit left she had of a shirt and went like that. And I swear to God, they were tucked in. (laughs) (laughs) You you didn't see anything. You mean she had such a damn hang down problem? She had a W going on? (laughs) No, they were actually tucked into her sweats. (laughs) God bless her. (laughs) I mean, you know, applaud the effort. Yeah, Yeah. You know, I go from a high to a low to a, well... You don't see that shit every day. No, no. <laughs> hey, that, man, that's some self confidence, man. All like, right. Well, I don't know exactly what she was on, but okay. Well, you know, do you boo boo? Sure. Maybe, maybe they're working together. Do you boo boo? One one makes your day when you're all nice and happy. The other one just shits all over your happy day. They're they're in cahoots, man. In cahoots. <laughs> Something, but yeah, that was. <laughs> it was a strange day. I went, you know, back in and dropped my trailer and. I'm just kind of leaning against the trailer laughing. The guy that was supposed to hook on it goes, are you going to get out from reading that son of a bitch? I said, yeah, in a minute. I told him what happened. He goes, you're foolish. I said, no. I said, you've got to go over here. But when you come up on Colorado, look over by the circle ramp. You're going to see this old girl. All right. Oh, this was, oh, sorry. This was the homeless chick Yeah. that pulled her shirt yeah. up for you yeah. to see. And he pulls up there and, and he, I get a phone call and I was headed back out of town i was on my way back i'd already got my my trailer full of boxes so they could keep going over at excel and a cargill now and i get a phone call i said hey what's going on he goes i seen the one you have to be bullshitting about the other one I said, no honest to god honest to god and a little purple car and he goes oh my i can't believe it so yeah that's exactly what happened he goes what a day <laughs> so was the first set nice Oh, they never dropped that. They just popped right out and were there. <laughs> Not tucked in. No. Uh, could have poked somebody's eye out. I, uh, yeah, we had to, when I worked nights, you, they deliver, say if we take their milk at night, you don't, we don't go to anything Yeah, and anymore. that's, you know, most of the time I ran nights because yeah. we live out of Cargill. You know, the first load, like on a Sunday night, Sunday, like three days a week. So it would be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right. The first load was supposed to leave at 1 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, you'd run up there in the dark, but, you know, get, you know, your third load of the day. And right. If everything's clicking right, you're like 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. So you take that, uh, it's a highway, whatever highway you're on, to go up to Vasquez. It goes over to yeah. 70, right? Yeah. I was hauling a load of milk up there one day, and they're doing all the construction on 70. Oh, and it's well, a train wreck. They completely cut off that off-ramp because, like you said, you get off that off-ramp on the 70, you turn right away, back right. And that's where yeah. Safeway is, right there on the yeah, corner. Yeah, it's just that little, you know, you bump, bump, right. and you're on that frontage road. Right, that's where I had to go. Well, they completely shut off the, the off-ramp. So I didn't realize you had to go to, like, Troy, go down all the way, then get back on 70. I didn't know where to go. So I'm in this truck. Go I, down to Quebec and you A know, big around. ass truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, so I'm on my phone trying to get on my map but not look like I'm on my phone because it's a huge no-no. And it keeps telling me, just turn around, turn around. And I'm like, fuck you, I can't turn around. So I called the yeah, lead yeah. driver, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. <clears throat> She's And Addie, her name is Addie. What's up, Addie? She was awesome. Uh, she goes, fuck, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And so finally, I just start reading signs. Well, I see a, a road that I know will take me back to I-25 eventually, because I don't know where I'm going. Oh, so you're headed west? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, you so, got you got food board on that big deal. Yeah. So I I see a road that I recognize. It's Colfax. So I turn this loaded milk truck on the Colfax, which yeah, is a Colfax. massive massive no no man. Are you're heading west and you get Colfax. No. What? No. So. Or were you headed east? Now you got me confused. Yeah, I must have headed east. Okay. Holy shit, you went clear out to Colfax to turn around? Yeah, I didn't know where else to turn around, right? So you were all the way out by Tower Road before So he was past around. Tower Road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was, was past, past Tower Road. Tower a couple miles. Dude, you could have just went to Quebec, you know, <laughs> whip the bitch, you know, Quebec uh, back on I-70, and there's a, they got the same thing on the other side. Yeah, I didn't know that. So Hindsight. Yeah, yeah. Where were you then, yeah, Cam? Yeah. Uh, but, How come you weren't running Google Maps back then, bitch? But I'll tell you what. Well, I was doing all this shit, you know, <laughs> all over the country. I didn't have Google Maps. I, uh, so, I had to fuck around and find out. Yeah. Right, exactly. So I'm on, uh, I'm on Colfax. And I pull my tags up because I'm loaded and I'm not supposed to be on Colfax, right? And it's under construction too, so I'm weaving through. It's so bad, dude. But it comes down to the part where it's the capital. Is that big S curve that goes to the capital? Oh my god! So, you, so yeah, yeah. I got you one. were 19 different shades of fucking lost. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I knew I was. If I get back to I-25 and hit 70, I'm fine. Anyway, so I, how I, many opportunities did he miss to just hang right and get back to I-70? A lot. No, no, no. I'm in a quad, not, man. I'm but, in a big truck. But he's so. in an 18 wheeler. Yeah. Get, I mean, yeah, I can flip a for... bitch. I can flip a bitch on Capitol Hill, <laughs> but that's yeah. a different ball game, right yeah. there. So anyway. I, I actually found in a, in a semi uh, the uh, light rail repair yard, and from where I was supposed to be and where that was at, two totally different locations. I was trying to find this place called uh, El Molino Foods, which was off of uh, I twenty five and Eighth Avenue. <clears throat> Little brick building, kind of like this, and they did like Mexican bean dips and and stuff like that. Well, my instructions sucked, and there wasn't a good sign on the place. <laughs> and then trying to get back across the street after that's uh, a crappy area, right? Six there. o'clock in the morning was damn near impossible because there's a bus garage down there, and the buses were running like a hundred miles an hour through there. And you just close your eyes and start backing up and hit the door. It was insane. First time I went there. After that, I figured out you get there about four in the morning, get doors open across the street, back across Eighth Avenue, and and back up the dock and go take a nap for a while. Because hmm. otherwise, you were just going to sit there and cry. Interesting. <laughs> All right. What do you think about that one, Jen? Well, I think. Are there any more titties to be talked about on this? Not on this. You know, not that story. But that was that was a day. That was a day in the life. Trip. That was a day in the life. Hmm. Nothing like seeing an excellent pair and then a homeless pair, huh? Put you in some perspective. <laughs> How old were you at the time? Oh, God, I was probably 25, 26. Oh, okay, so you had seen a few titties by then. You knew yeah, that they yeah, were all a little different two, looking. One or two. I'd seen one or two. <laughs> all right. Um, you know, your directions... We're spot on right there, so of where you were headed. So that makes that all the more believable to me right there. All right, so you liked it. I did like it. I can't believe that people show their boobies out on the road. <laughs> oh, yeah, they show Oh, they're so... But You'll of course, see a lot more than that. Of course, I guess I don't um, hide what I'm doing out on the road either. I, I've never even thought that a trucker could look in on me. You'd be amazed at the shit I've seen. It's crazy. Interesting. I'll look over at people when I'm like singing, and I'll look over at them and be like, <laughs> "Yeah, just whatever I'm singing to them." And yeah, usually they'll just look at me like I'm a giant freak, and yeah, they there's got a lot it. of that that goes on. There, there really, really is. <laughs> It's freaking hilarious how that goes about. Yeah, I think that's believable. I hate Denver traffic, and I know that some freaky, freaky shit also happens uh, up it's there. It's insane. So. All righty. We got the last one. Last but not least. <laughs> last uh, and least. Snowplow and wildlife. Snowplows and wildlife. Yeah, in the middle of the night, out on the interstate, you know, you're cruising along. That's the time you can't see where you're And you're in your snow plow. Yeah. Okay. And you can't see where you're at half the time. You're just, you know, plowing by Braille. Mm -hmm. Thank God that, you know, we, we got the, the road redone where we got rumble strips. That way, you know, I got to move back over. Plowing by Braille. I uh, shit you not. If, there's been nights that I can't see for me to moose. Yep. Wow. It's stupid crazy. And you've been out there on nights like yep. that. 
and you get these people in cars and the funny thing and what i've noticed is the shape of the windshields are different so the snow hits the cars different and the trucks they're more of an up and down and it screws with your eyes yeah you mean more of a straight rather yeah. than a curved outward? No, we're when talking. When the snow comes at you, you can't tell how fast you're going. You yeah, can't tell anything. You know, it's more of an up and down. <laughs> and you know, a vehicle, you know, like pickup car, you know, you know, Stubaru, it's, you know, more laid back and you get a different vision on it. Interesting. Yeah, it's kind of a crazy, and I'm pretty sure you've noticed that most. Yeah, you, you can't tell how fast you're going. You can't tell anything. It's, it, 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 it's coming right... It looks like in Star Wars where they're about That's to hit. That's what I was just going to say. They're Star about Wars. to hit the warp speed, yeah, or light get, speed. Oh wow! It, it's, it's, and it's, you deal with that for twelve hours, and you're just like, you know, I couldn't do it for twelve hours. I, it would, it's too much, man. It's, you got to get out, and you know, get to each end of the the patrol. And you got to get out, walk around the truck. And yeah. Clear your mind. Yeah. You know, knock the cobwebs loose. Right. And especially at like a midnight to noon shift. Yeah. About four in the morning, it just hits hard. Yeah, I bet. So Crazy. you're out plowing. Yeah. Where at? Oh, this had to have been about the 105 and a half, 106. So On I-76? Marco, I-76, and it was eastbound. And okay. beep off and along, can't hardly see. Cruise along. I passed something, wasn't quite sure what it was. Okay, well, I'm seeing shit again. Because it gets freaky out there. You don't know what scale is going on. And then a little closer, a little further down the road, you look up, you know, I pass a doe. Holy, where the hell did that come from? And I can see lights in my mirror of vehicles coming. I'm like, well, I hope the hell to get out of the way. We're going to have a real mess. Yeah. And get up a little bit further, and I'm looking, and I'm like, what the hell? Oh, shit, that's a coyote. <laughs> and come along just cruising through. No. I launch that coyote, you know clear off the shoulder right oh you hit it yeah and he went flying oh yeah i don't like know if that coyote dog. made it or not but yeah <laughs> probably not, not under not coyote really. <laughs> yeah it, you can't do anything about it you're cruising you know 35 40 miles an hour yeah. at, at a good night but this one i was probably running probably about 30 yeah it was kind of hard to see but i had to keep maintaining some speed because of the heavy wet snow mm-hmm. and i had to you know yeah get it shoved you know get it flung off kind of you know help yourself out in the process kind of yeah. deal and i just seen it you know seen two deer i'm pretty sure the one was a deer right and it could have been a horse it could have been a moose could have been a, i don't know what it was alien yeah, whatever yeah. <laughs> and then i did see the doe which right. was you know closer to me and you okay oh. i saw that and i'm looking and i'm like you can't see shit and you look up and there's oh shit coyote and he, he was gone right <laughs> Wow! Right, <laughs> and you're literally down there in the in the valley. Well, you're starting to go. Yeah, where you're that's pushing Rogan you Keensburg up no, there. It's out here. Oh, it's out this way. Yeah, we'll so we'll you... draw you a map. I'll get some crayons. We'll get it all lined up. <laughs> we'll hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's scary. And one of the scarier things is when you come up on another vehicle. Yeah, and oh. you, you don't see those headlights until you're right up above. Oh, I've yeah. got a, you know. I was one night I was plowing. It was, it was a Sunday morning. Probably about five o'clock in the morning. I guess this dude was going to work, and it was about the it was at the ninety five, right past the you know Hill Rose exit westbound. And I'm in the passing lane. I'm going through sand, and it quit snowing. But at that point in time, we didn't have the chemicals we have now. Right. So we're just sanding and hoping for daylight. This dude come walking up out of the out of the median right in front of me, Oof. and I about I about dished the truck in the dead uh, of winter in a storm. Well, yeah, because his pickup was at the bottom of the. Oh, he had, bottom of the median because it's off. really deep right there. Yeah, you know, you know, Javier wasn't driving for shit and you know dumped her in the median. Right, you know, it's your problem, not mine. I'll call state patrol, somebody come talk to you. But he got right in front of me, and I hit the brakes, and it was a little single axle truck at that time. Oh. and I had that thing sideways. Oh man, got her straightened out and pulled over, and I went and chewed his ass. Yeah. You guys aren't obligated to help anybody. Uh, like you're just obligated to well, call in. You know, they would like us to help, but after, you know, years and years and the shit I've seen, uh, there's people moving around. It's not on its top. I'll keep going. Yeah. But if there's, you know, if I'm worried about somebody's safety or something's going sure. on, well, you know, you know I'll, I'll, I'll go help. You know, it's not a top priority, 
but I will do it because I've had some situations happen that it's just I don't even want to think about right. it. Right. Well, and I just I didn't know if the DOT had to had a had a no. We are obligated to call it in. To, to do we are obligated to call it in to state patrol. Uh, in a lot of cases, we are the first responder on scene. Sure. Because sure, you know, we're, think of we it. happen to be there. But yeah. yeah. Wow. But I, you know. I'd have loved to see him looking at coyote's face when we went flying and just flopping <laughs> in the yeah. So two deer and one coyote. You nailed the coyote. Did you hit the deer? Huh? Did you hit him with your plow? Where he oh just yeah, I had like, a plow pit running. And he just ching. <laughs> he did. A, he did a skateboard and ramp up and oh, out of no, there. Oh no, he was. It was. He was launched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't mess around with the snow. When it snows, I slow down, man. Hey, oh, you, I, you I, got to because yeah. it's, it's yeah, stupid. it's terrible out there. Yeah, and there, I could probably do another freaking podcast and just sit shit I've seen out on the road. Yeah, whether it's been in snowstorms or anything else, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff I don't like talking about. But yeah, there's, there's some uh, pretty cool shit. A lot of guys I work with that are you know Billy badasses that like to haul ass and brag about it. Like, You're an idiot. Yeah, it's, and those is, big hey, trucks. is Ken Swan still over there? No, Kenny retired. Oh, uh, I worked with him, and he was down and out of hand. He he's was, a good dude. Yeah, he was a kick in the ass. <laughs> he's a, he's still a good dude from what I hear, man. So yeah, uh, oh yeah, I've known Kenny for years. Yeah, good so. man. Um, yeah, it's it's scary. It's you know uh, even even at night anywhere you know those because sometimes they just they're up on you, man. You yeah, you, you you don't know. I've uh, I've not not anything yet. You know what I mean? But uh, I've came goddamn close. You know, yeah, and it's it's a. You know, it's a different world. You know, but, city people, you know, they don't have to worry about it. Right, right. It's uh Well, sure, there's squirrels and dogs and, and homeless cats. people. And, yeah, but, and homeless people. When was the last time you've been he through downtown? didn't down just say that. No, no, when was the last time you went through downtown? Oh, my gosh, it's so sad. It's, yeah, it's sad, but, you know, they just walk out in front of you like, whoa. I know. It's scary. It's not just homeless. Go to Boulder, same way. None of them are homeless, you know? yeah. Just a that's just boulder. It's just becoming a giant, giant right. uh, sad, sad problem. And, right. Yeah, I don't have an answer. And, I don't either. Yeah, I don't even pretend. To. I always used to say feed the homeless to the hungry, but that's just mm-hmm. kind of an asshole. That's remark. kind of redundant. Yeah, yeah, re, re, uh, asshole remark that I've always made. Yeah. But <laughs> although feasibly, <laughs> it would work. All right, Jen. So, uh, what do you think of that one? Um, I think that's interesting um location is is would be my concern on that with the i get coyote and deer but i don't know i've hit I've that's hit, gonna uh, be my one questionable right there i've hit uh i don't know how many raccoons though man the, those sons of bitches you know i remember one time i was coming yeah, back from hillbrows trash, man and i was just going bandits. down highway six and uh <laughs> They were eating another dead raccoon, right? They, 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 yeah. don't, they don't care. They're scavengers. And I didn't see them until last night. I, I nailed another one. And some in my head just pictured those fuckers chasing the truck like, son of a bitch. <laughs> you hit Frank, you son of a bitch. You know, <laughs> wait for me to get out and just attack me. You know as small as they are, they're yeah. damaging no, to they're your mean. vehicles. They're mean. Well, not oh, the trucks. they're so mean. <laughs> not oh, the well, trucks. Sure. Oh, have you ever seen what, a, what happens when somebody hits a peacock at 75 miles an hour? Oh. No, but I've hit an armadillo. Colorful. It's colorful. And oh, it is. It is. They'll tear your shit up. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was funny. I was headed east, you know, and it was over about uh, Hospital Road. It was about a half mile uh, east of Hospital Road, and Mortensen's had a peacock down there. <laughs> well, I got up on the interstate, and this gal hit it, and poof, feathers and oh, yeah. everything. I, I seen plastic. <laughs> she never pulled over. Really? She kept going. I had to go clean plastic and burn it off the damn road. Oh, my goodness. But that gal never stopped. She's going to get home and have to play, explain something to her husband. Yeah, I hit a goose one time coming back from Pruitt Reservoir in high school. We had a party, taking oh. these two girls back, you know, and I had a crush on one of them. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, they're they're drunk and I'm talking and just looking at them the whole time. Laying I must some game say. down. I'm trying to. It was a <laughs> piss poor game, but I'm uh, talking to my son. I look up and there's this goose that literally looked at me and I said, <laughs> Pap, hit that sucker and uh oh so they were playing basketball they start and they were crying. playing bad yeah they start crying i'm like i'll go check on it and i fucking i fucked that thing up dude. and i'm like it's dead so, you, sure? you, know, yeah. you know they were playing basketball and you were playing badminton kind yeah. of game yeah 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 pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so nobody wins all right <laughs> although it was a great story and i couldn't i can't even imagine the stuff that you see because the, the times you guys are out on the road is when yeah everybody else hiding. should be home yeah everybody else should have their butts at home mm-hmm. 
Unless if they have to go out, and most of us don't. We're just like, oh, no. The, the best part is, is, and it drives me fucking crazy, is, you know, I'm getting ready to go to work, or I'm at work, get a text or a phone call. Hey, do you think it'd be all right if, you know, I go to Greeley and go shopping? <laughs> I'm in a fucking snowplow, dude. Yeah. You know, hang the fuck up. Stay in the house. <laughs> I've texted Make something you. warm to eat. Yeah. And... I stay out of my way several times over the years and done right. the same thing. And uh, you got the same answer. You're nicer to me, but yeah, you usually tell me to stay home. Yeah, well, you usually stay home. Always stay yeah. home. Always if it's stay nasty, home. I don't, yes, don't chance please, it. Don't, don't chance it. We've got enough problems out there. We don't need you along with exactly. it. Exactly. You, know, you see people when the barricades go down, go by them, and I just shake my head. I'm like, you realize if you if you go past a barricade and you get in a wreck, your insurance will not cover it. Nope. They, you're you're screwed. That that's on you. You know. Right. I got stuck in Akron one time when I worked for Pepsi. I was in a truck. It was my pickup. And I helped the driver get the truck at least back to Akron because before he lived. He got a hotel room that night. But, I mean, for whatever reason, they kept the road closed till like, 1 o'clock the next day. When I Oh, I remember up, that one. That was uh, where we had that really bad blizzard over there. Yeah, this is years yeah, ago. Yeah, I remember that. I got video of that. I was plowing. I was in a loader. Within the plow in the front of that loader was, like, four foot tall. And I'm rolling snow. All the way out, it was freaking insane. Wow! Yeah, uh, that that was kicking the ass, kind of cleaning that up because you didn't know your traffic. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. So I, you know, as I stopped, there was two other guys that said we're gonna go through or uh, not Anton by uh, Atwood. You know, run up sixty three, and I yeah, that I was, was like that fool's bet right there yeah. because it wasn't any better. Yeah, but but it wasn't closed quite yet. And they said when they close it, just go around. There, no one's patrolling. You're like, it's not doesn't matter. You get in a wreck and they find out you went around a barricade. You're, you're yeah, screwed. What level of stupid do you have going on here? Yeah, we got a hotel room. Just stay here. You know. What you I mean? know, I get that. You know, you get the gung ho, you know, macho attitude on that. And you know, when I was younger, I'd do shit like that, stupid shit. But stop and realize that shit's down for a reason. Yeah. You know, and we're we're out there trying to keep it open. Right. And there's a lot of times we got to pull over and wait because we can't see shit either. Yeah. Right. And we'll be calling. You know, we'll be talking on the radio and. Uh, you know, checking on people. Where are you at? Well, I'm at County Road, you know, da 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 da. Can't see shit. Right. Stay there. Stay there. You got food, you got your yeah. blizzard bag. Yeah. Got it. All right. Kick back and, you know, enjoy the tunes or. Yeah. And nowadays, you know, what, what podcast you listen to? I, I edit podcasts. <laughs> That's what I do when I get stuck somewhere. I edit these damn things. Yeah, so. and it's well, like if you were raised a farm kid, you know you don't leave town in the winter without a full tank of gas, water, blankets, food. Yeah, yeah, yeah an emergency. You know, because if you go off the road, chances are you're, you're going to be, be there, there for a day or two. Yeah. That or you know, get some farmer that's going out to check cows. And like, who's this idiot? Yeah, eh, I'll go check cows and I'll be back. And they'll you know, get your ass out yeah. and make sure you're okay. And people, anymore, they figure this like, oh shit, you know, I got a four wheel drive, I got a wheel drive. Yeah. You know, the ads on TV said I can go. Yeah, that just. Yeah, go right ahead and I'm just going to drive by, usually, laugh and wave. They're usually the most dangerous, yeah, too. That just means and, you have four you know, wheel spinning. That's all that means. You well, know. And, and Jen, mm -hmm. I. I hate to put you in this category, but as I've come through... Are you talking about lady drivers? No, I'm talking about fucking Subarus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, if I see somebody driving a Subaru, I'm judging them because I already figure an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, because they... You see, know, in my snow, stereotypic and, and asshole thinks lesbian. No, because, you know, 95% <laughs> of the time, you know, they're thinking about the, the Subaru commercial and they're busting All through a drift. drive? Yeah, and they busting through drifts so they can go everywhere. And they, when they go in the ditch, I just laugh. My car drives like shit on the snow. There, yeah. there ain't no all wheel drive going on in that yeah. car. All right, all right, yeah. So uh, we pick who has to guess first. We rock paper scissors to see who has to guess Blizzard first. Lizard Spock, or you just rock paper no, scissors? Just, no, not that that bang <laughs> shit. That's we have a hard I don't know why decide. that came into my mind. How do you rock paper scissors? Oh, sorry. Okay. Like how do you rock? You mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you want to go rock, paper, scissors, shoot? Or bomb, bomb, bomb? Whatever floats your goat. What, it, well, no, it, we want to know we what know. you We're curious. do. What did you do growing up? <clears throat> did you go one, two, three, and then throw yeah. it? Or I one, lost. two, yeah. and then throw it? <laughs> rock, paper, boo. I just... Yeah, just, I lost. Yeah, Jesus. three pumper. Okay, all right. There's there's two different kinds. We always grill everybody, so that's how we do it. So 
three pumpers. Three pumpers. All right, ready? Yep. Oh. Right, <laughs> yeah. Right, that one. All right, we got three great stories. We have uh, snowplows and wildlife, brown derby, and Denver traffic. <clears throat> I'm gonna start off by saying I think uh, snowplows, snowplows, and wildlife is a true story. I really think it is. The other two, I'm, I'm, I'm I have uh, questions on. I, I think they're both lies. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you did opposite. The, the, the brown derby, I question because I don't know if a, a horse is 15 and a half uh, hands high can fit through a door. Of uh, with a person on top of it, I would not qu- sitting straight up. Uh, I question that. Uh, Denver traffic. I think that you got. Uh, I'm going to take Denver traffic, and I'm going to take Denver traffic because I do believe that you did maybe get flashed by the uh, sexy titties, uh, but I think you threw in the homeless ones for flavor. What do you think, Ooh, Jen? Well, f- fascinating. I didn't even think about your 15 and a half high with a f- person sitting on top, fitting through a door, mm. but. Yes, you can fit through a door. You just got to barely duck because I've been on a horse that tall before. All right. And you don't have to duck very much. So, um, Denver traffic. Uh, see, and I, would, the part I would question about that is you didn't see nice titties. You saw homeless titties. <laughs> oh, I saw them both. I saw them both. So, um, uh, snow plows and wildlife, yeah, it's p- totally feasible. I mean, anywhere here in Colorado, we've got those animals running across the roads nonstop, causing danger. So I am also going to go with Denver traffic, but for different reasons. So don't flip that over quite yet. Before right. we go there, <clears throat> I want to say thank you to the Brush Emporium. Thank you guys for uh, letting us have this space down here to have the podcast. Without you, it would be possible, but it would be much worse. <laughs> they <laughs> They've been so generous, so amazing here, and this yeah, is yeah, it's a wonderful environment. It, it's cool. Yeah, thank you so much. And have you have you eaten here? Yes. No, no, I haven't yet. You're about to tonight. You guys ordered pizza. I did. She did. Oh, guys, uh, they have a new pizza: chili cheese dog pizza. <laughs> have a piece of her pizza. The pizza is great here. The Gil wings. And I are great had a here. nice talk at Walmart. Well, we were, we were talking up there, and we're like, all right, uh, you know, next couple of days, you know, with me being on injury leave, I'm home by myself. Right. Uh, you know, I'm unsupervised, so I'll be down here. Yeah, you should, absolutely. It is so good. Yeah. And it's great. They have also a lot of gifts upstairs here at 210 Clayton Street, the Brush Emporium. Uh, a lot Wonderful of people, selection of stuff. I was surprised when I came in. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. If you so want a unique cool gift. Stuff. Yeah, it's all you, kinds of cool stuff. If you want a unique gift, come on down to the, uh, the Brush Emporium. You know, don't go to Amazon. The embroidered toilet paper is a must. Yes, yes. <laughs> With the little poopies on. Yeah, embroidered like toilet paper, you guys. Does it get more adorable than that? Yeah, uh, my, my gift giving just... You know, got so much better. There you go. So pick up some <laughs> embroidered toilet paper. But once again, thank you, Brush and Point. If you haven't come checking them out, please check them out. Shop local. That's what these guys are all about. They have a great restaurant upstairs. They have all kinds of stuff from pizza to wings to pasta to pretzel sticks to ice cream, whatever. Uh, they have a great seating area upstairs so you can, you know, sit down with the family. And they have old board games, old school stuff to do like you did when you were a kid. Come down here, show the kids an old school night, a nice family night. Also, on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month, they have bingo. So come down play a little bingo right yes and we came down for the trivia night um when they ran it and we had an absolute ball doing the trivia i was gonna say bingo's well. right up your alley it? bingo all of that's right up my alley yeah <laughs> you and your walker yes me and my Doesn't walker run, run some bingo, i got all my daubers and my dabbers <laughs> <laughs> all right so Having said that, uh, thank you, Brush and Poem. And I did not I didn't at the very beginning of the podcast. You guys obviously have seen it if you watch this. We have a sponsor today. Uh, it was Full Tilt Trailers. Um, I didn't call them out uh, or announce it, but being in the podcast, that's what you saw. And we have sponsors from here. It should be from here on out, people sponsoring the podcast with a small commercial. So please make sure you support that local business as well. They've been great to deal with. So having said that, we have three stories. Uh Snowplows and wildlife, brown derby, and Denver traffic. We're both taking Denver traffic, Cam. Let's see that. Dun, 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 dun. Brown derby. Oh. Come on. I was actually fully clothed when I rode through there. Okay. I wasn't in my underwear. That's <laughs> it. That's it. So there actually is a brown derby bar yeah. at Deer Trails. Oh, it used to be. I don't know if it's still there, but yeah. Interesting. Brown derby. And the only <laughs> difference was is you weren't. Yeah, I wasn't in my Nike. underwear. Yeah. Incredible. So. Denver traffic is a true story. Absolutely. Well, that just makes me sad. Um, 
<laughs> Which part makes you oh, sad? Pat, there's some that homeless. You, that you know, <laughs> you had to see homeless. Listen, man. Trucks. Hey, I go from the good to the bad. To get, what the hell just happened? One man's trash is another man's treasure. There's somebody out hey, there like some. Hey, you know, I saw the good and the bad. And the, you know, it was a good, bad, and the ugly. Right. And the bad and the ugly were all in one, one well, package. Wait, so you, I don't judge. When you I don't judge. I don't either. But once you see one set, you want to see them all. Well, I, I say I don't judge because if some lady, we were all flashing wieners at him, I'd be the bad part. I guarantee. Well, I what, saw a big one, and I saw this fat guy. It was not, I love it was not it. impressive. Okay, so. fat guy, you know. You know, fat guy uh, fraternity here. You know, we got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once you reach the stage where you sh- are sitting on your own nut sack, you'll understand. Not yet. You know, tidy whites are good for a reason. Yeah, yeah, it works out. Uh, That's plows. why we don't wear boxers. That's right. <laughs> snow plows and wildlife is a true story. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I kind of believe that one the way, by the way you told it, you know. Uh, yeah, that, that, that one freaked me out. Because, yeah. you know, it, you're just locked in on what you're doing. And like, the fuck was that? That I, for And then some like, reason, oh, that's a doe. And you're going along. <laughs> oh, Wiley Coyote went for a right. Right. <laughs> for right. some reason, I got foosball stuck in my head. Like how you strike that foosball. Like that's how you hit that freaking yeah. coyote. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, and you're going fun. along, and, you know, plows like that, and you hit it, and it just goes. Ching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, but the wildlife isn't driving a truck. What I worry about the most is it's other drivers that are oh, watching the wildlife. Yeah, yeah. It, that. that's, that's the most annoying thing out there. When you drive in Denver. Yeah. I don't have children, but eh. if I did, and they were learning to drive, that's the first thing they would learn is to respect those bigger trucks. Don't yeah. screw around around them. Don't. Yeah. I've got four kids, and uh, my two younger, you know, two older daughters, when they were a little used to ride with me all the time, and then you know my son and my youngest daughter, they didn't get a chance to ride with me, but they have a healthy respect of what's what's going yeah. on there. Because I've done it for so long. Yeah, I was absolutely. always told, don't ever make a trucker break. Just don't, that's yeah. eighteen wheels against your four, and yeah. if you have to sit and wait for them to come and do their thing, then you sit and you wait. You, you, you can do stop not on make a dime. Them break. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It takes us, you know, you know, five one dollar bills to get close to stopping. Well, yeah. and the trucker yeah. is the gets us a lot of stuff. Back, that's even worse. You get yeah. the slosh and. Oh, yeah. It, and it'll knock you forward, man. I, I, I've had people pull out in front of me. I've had to lock them up in Denver a few times. And, oh, yeah. It's, it's terrifying. Uh, you know, for them, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. win that unless you're a locomotive or another truck. And if you I'm going to win. So if you, you want to cool. continue getting stuff, yeah. you, know, you better respect you know, the truckers. Like, huh? you, know, you know, you're figuring with a state patrol or the, you know, the PD or whatever. It's like You're looking at them going, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. you got some explaining to do, yeah. Pretty scary yeah, stuff. I, and a lot of the times that uh, – you know the the truck driver loses on that deal with now with the dash cams and stuff. Yeah, the forward facing dash cams. Mm-hmm. I think that's a must because that's oh. just for self preservation. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't drive a truck without it anymore. Yeah, and I've that's I think that's car. something that yeah. you know when I get back to work and get going, it's something I'm going to put in my truck just for to protect your ass. Yeah, because there's so many people that you know. Well, you you, see, can't, you can't fix stupid, but you can stick it in the you know use duct tape stick it in the corner and shut it up for a while. Yeah, you, you see on TV and all these commercials now about uh, have you been hurt by a trucker? You know, Frank Azar. Yeah, yeah, trying to sue him, man. So yeah, you got to cover your ass because yeah. guarantee most of those people pulled out in front of that truck yeah, or just did. They're exactly, causing the accident. Yeah, and then they they they're oh my neck, my back, my neck, and my back bullshit. You know, and you're like, dude, you know. I'm driving. This thing weighs 56 uh, tons. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, not, and you know, oh. now it's up your pussy and your crack. But there yeah. you that's go. what I was yeah. just thinking. I was like, my neck, my back. I'm surprised. Yeah, I, I went the same place you did. It. God, this is disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, hey Cam, so much. Thank you for coming on, man. Oh, thanks for having me. This has been fun. Were you nervous at all? Oh. God, I about shit myself. Okay. So he was, he was I, super nervous. I asked that uh, for one reason. So many people, uh, I get to do the podcast back out last moment sometimes, and that's fine. I understand this is uh, stepping outside of someone's yeah, it's outside comfort, your box. Comfort, yeah, comfort level. Um, but you'd come back and do this again. Oh, yeah. See, that's that's the answer I'm looking for. I tell people, watch the podcast. Yeah. You'll see or ask people have been on know, here. I, you know? I watched a couple of them today, and I'm like, what have I got myself into? Uh, no, <laughs> and I was kind of freaking out, and it was kind of cool. And I'm like, okay, you know, just go be yourself. This is all for fun, dude. Yeah, be yourself and yeah. uh, you know, be a bullshitter and yeah. just go from there. Well, we love to hear the stories. I mean, yeah. no matter what story, somebody's connecting. Somebody's out there connecting. And, and I bet somebody's going to watch us going, and they're going to say, all three of them stories are bullshit. You know what? There's been a lot of podcasts like that. And they're not necessarily are. Just 
people have done amazing, crazy, weird, and crazy shit. Life is crazy, and you run into yeah. stuff. And, yeah. Um, you know. And if you know somebody that wants to do the podcast, or if you think someone can do the podcast, you have a bullshit in your life, bullhucker.com. Check them out. Um, you can absolutely, absolutely, uh, under the contact form, rat them out. I'll come hunt them down, you know. But I ask, if you do rat them out, let them know that I'm coming to do Because if I show up and they don't know... They never watched the podcast and knew who I am. It's awkward <laughs> as shit. So, um, and also, if you've enjoyed this podcast today, I forgot to bring it up earlier. On the bottom right hand corner of the screen is a little red dot. That's our subscribe button. Go ahead and click that bad boy. It's a small click for you, but man, it's a huge click for us. We appreciate the support, you know, and it's uh, it's a great thing. Uh, good stories, every you know. Yeah. Good time. Well, and that's what helps keep it going. I mean, yeah, we yeah. Can, yeah, Moose can keep doing this, and we can it's, keep enjoying everybody as been, long as you keep liking us. It's been fun. It's been fun to meet new people, you yeah. know. And it's it's I met a ton of new people, and then people I've never met before. The one before you, or two ones, I don't know. Uh, Jimmy Jabauer from Akron. I never met Jimmy in my life, you know. And he yeah. showed up because somebody emailed me and said, "You need to." He's an old rodeo guy. Oh, yeah. and his was so yeah. much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So once again. And thank you guys for supporting this thing. You know, it's been so much fun. So, uh, as I say that, thank you again, bro. Hey, no problem. I'm Moose Lundstrom. It. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, Cam. Wonder, Wonder Twins. I'm Wonder, Moose Lundstrom. Wonder Twin powers activate. Activate. I'm Jenny Nev. Uh, General Russ. I'll talk to you later. Peace. <laughs>